right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brusher here. Today, our goal is to understand and calculate the MAD for a set of data without getting MAD. First of all, let's examine what the acronym MAD stands for. Mean Absolute Deviation. Okay, and for most of you, that probably doesn't help a whole lot, so we need to really examine what Mean Absolute Deviation means. So let's look at each word in this acronym. Mean would suggest the average. Absolute represents absolute value, and that often is associated with distance. And finally, deviation, how much a number um, deviates from another or differs from another might be a word we would use. The average distance that each number is from the mean in a set of data. So the average distance a number is from the mean. Again, you still might be confused, so let's look at an example. Find the MAD for a given set of data, and I specifically chose these simpler numbers to help you better make sense out of the MAD. So we have 4, 5, 2, and 1 in our set of data. The first step that we need to follow is to find the mean for the set of data. So we're going to add these values in the set together. Once we find the sum, 4 plus 5 is 9, plus 2 is 11, plus 1 is 12. Once we have that sum, then again we're going to count the number of pieces of data. So we have one piece here, we have 2, 3, and 4. And that's the number I'm going to divide by to find the mean. 12 divided by 4 equals 3. So the mean for this set of data is equal to 3. Now to find the MAD, we have to take it a couple steps further. So if we know what the mean is, we're going to use the numbers in this particular set and find the distance or absolute value that each number deviates from the mean. We're looking at specifically how far is the number 4 away from the mean? 3. So we could take 4 minus 3. And again, how far is the number 5 away from the mean? 3. How far is the number 2 away from 3? And how far is the number 1 away from 3? A way to write this would be to use subtraction to determine the distance for each number. And since distance is always positive, we would want to use absolute value to make sure, again, that it was positive. 4 minus 3 is 1, and the absolute value tells us it must be positive. 5 minus 3, again, I'm using this 5 over here, and I get 2. And again, with absolute value, it's positive. Now, 2 minus 3, we get a negative 1, but since its absolute value of negative 1 is a positive 1. And finally, 1 minus 3 is negative 2, but again, the absolute value of negative 2 is going to give us a positive value of 2. Now, these all represent distances, the distance that each number in the set is from the mean. The next thing we need to do is add those distances together. So, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 1 is 4, plus 2 is 6. So, we get 6, and we're going to take that 6, the sum of all those distances, and divide it by 4. You can see it says here divided by 4 because that's how many pieces of data are in the set. And this would actually equal 6 divided by 4 is 1.5. So you find the average distance that each number is from the mean. To find that average, we had to divide by the number of pieces of data and we came up with our MAD 1.5 without getting mad. 
Well, I hope that helped you out to better understand mean absolute deviation. See ya.